In this unit, we're going to study trigonometry. In this lesson, we're going to use the trigonometric ratios to solve various problems. Okay, hi everybody. So in this lesson here, we're going to be solving using the trigonometric ratios. And a word that we use to kind of help us remember uh, how sine, cos, and tan all work here is SOHCAHTOA. So, S-O-H, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we're dividing in between the two, the two letters that represent the sides there. So we've learned about sine, cos, and tan in these previous lessons. We just want a way of kind of helping remember that. So sine, again, is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so shorthand, and then there's your so ka toa. Anyway, if it helps, great. Uh, if not, then you're going to have to find kind of your own way of, of memorizing how that works. It really does help to, to understand uh, and be able to kind of pull out those ratios when you need to without having to look them up. It does make a difference here. Now, how do we use these things to find unknown side lengths and or angles? Okay, well, first of all, just like we've done in the previous few lessons here, we're going to label the triangles with respect to the angle. So that's identifying the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent. Then we're going to circle the sides with a number or a variable, okay? And then note the letter combination. So basically, we're going to draw our attention to the information that's given, and we're going to try to figure out, based on the angle that's, that's being indicated, whether this is a sine question, a cosine question, or a tangent question. Okay, and again, we'll know that based on the information that we've been given. Then we're going to replace the letters in the formula with the measurements that were given. So theta is always going to be the angle. Opposite and adjacent hypotenuse will always be side lengths. And then we're just going to solve for the unknown variable. And that might be setting up a proportion where you cross, multiply, and divide. But if you're looking for an angle here, you might have to use the inverse trig function or the second trig function to get that, that angle that we're looking for. In any case here... Uh, this is all, like, like we were saying right here, it's all similar to what we've done before. So now let's just take a look at some examples. Okay, so now let's take a look at a, a handful of problems here. So find the unknown side in the, near, in the triangles below. Round all side lengths, or sorry, I should just find, say find the unknown. Round all the side lengths to the nearest tenth and angles to the nearest whole degree here. So in this case right here, we're looking for this side, but what's important right now is this angle that I've been given. Um, now, with this angle right here, notice how that helps us identify the sides here. This is opposite, and then this one over here is going to be our adjacent, and the one that we're looking for here, the x, that is our hypotenuse, because it's opposite the right angle. So I look at the information that I'm given here. I'm looking for the hypotenuse, but I've been given the adjacent. So then I think here, okay, okay, what, what trig function relates the adjacent and the hypotenuse? And the answer is cosine. This is my, the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse ratio. That is going to be 4.7 over x. And I know that's going to equal the cosine of 81 degrees. So that's the ratio. This is my little cheat for getting that ratio. And then I go to my calculator, cosine of 81. And you've, if you've watched the, the previous videos here, you know that I'm going to go to the fourth decimal place here. So 0. 0. 0. 0.1564 is going to be 4.7 over x. I'm going to rewrite that as 0. 0.1564 over 1. Then I'll cross multiply. Okay, and then I'm going to divide both sides by that 0.1564 because I want to get I want to get the x by itself. And when I do that, again on my calculator here, what I'm going to do here is 4.7 divided by that value that I just got. So I press second and then I choose the answer button on my calculator. And I get to the nearest tenth, 30.0. So 30.0, and in this case, the units are millimeters. For this question right here, even though I don't know what it is, the angle that's being indicated is this one right here, and it's y degrees. Okay, 
So if that's the angle that's significant, then this 4.9 is opposite. And the 16 here has got to be my hypotenuse, okay, because it's opposite the right angle. And then the adjacent isn't given. Okay, I'm not asking for the adjacent. I'm not giving you the adjacent. So then I got to think, what trig function relates the opposite and the hypotenuse to an angle? And the answer is sine. So this is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse is going to be 4.9 over 16. And that will equal the sine of that angle. Now in this case, I know the whole ratio there. So to get the angle, I'm going to use the inverse trig function there. So inverse uh, sine of 4.9 over 16. And now I can go to my calculator, second sine, 4.9 divided by 16. And because this is an angle that we're looking for here, I'm going to round to the nearest hole. So that's going to be approximately 18 degrees. So there you go. Now let's look at some, some other problems here. So here, Bill is renovating his house. He braces a wall with an eight foot wall brace. Okay, so that means that piece of wood there is eight feet. The distance from the wall to the brace on the floor is 2.4 feet, so that's down here. Calculate the angle at which the brace meets the wall. Okay, so meets the wall, that's gonna be up here and express your answer to the nearest degree. Okay, so this is the angle that we're looking for. So let's, let's call that theta. So what am I given here? Well, the wall and the floor meet at a right angle. So opposite that, this is my hypotenuse. If this is the angle that I'm interested in, the opposite side here is down here on the floor. So I'm given the opposite. And this side right here that I'm not asking for, okay, is the adjacent. I'm not giving you the information. I'm not asking for it. So then I got to think, well, what trig ratio takes an angle and relates it to the opposite side and the hypotenuse. And the answer, once again, is the sine ratio. So we're going to use the opposite over the hypotenuse, which will be 2.4 over 8. And that's going to equal the sine of theta. So in this case, I know the complete ratio. What I don't know is the angle that goes with it. And that's OK. That is simply going to be the inverse sine, or the second function sine, of 2.4 divided by 8, the same ratio. So on my calculator, second sine, 2.4 divided by 8. And I'm going to round this to the nearest degree, so it'll be 17 degrees. Okay, and there you go. Let's take a look at another problem. Matt is 1.65 meters tall. Okay, so 1.65 meters. And his shadow is 1.43 meters long. Okay. Determine the angle his shadow makes with the ground, which is called the angle of elevation here, to the nearest degree. So we're looking for A. So here's the angle that's significant. We're assuming that, that Matt is standing straight up, so he's perpendicular to the ground here. That makes this the hypotenuse. And if this is the angle that's important, this is the opposite side, which means this one down here is the adjacent side. So now I've got to ask myself, based on this situation here, what trig function, what trig ratio here requires the opposite and the adjacent but doesn't require the hypotenuse? And the answer is tangent. So that is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. It's going to equal 1.65 over 1.43. And that will be the tangent of that angle A. So once again, I have the complete ratio. What I'm missing is the angle. So A is going to be the inverse tangent of 1.65 over 1.43. So that is calculator work. Second tangent, 1.65 divided by 1.43. And we get to the nearest degree, 49 degrees. Okay. So now we're going to look at a problem that's got a couple of triangles in it, which typically means I'm going to have to move from one bit triangle to the next one here. So we want to calculate the measure of angle ABC. ABC. So it's this angle right here is what we want to know. Now, in this triangle right here, which is also a right angle, because if this is a right angle, so is this one, the only bit of information I have is that the hypotenuse here is 12. Well, that's not enough to do anything. 
But this triangle over here, I do have some information. I know that's a right angle. I'm giving you this angle here. And across from the right angle, that means this is the hypotenuse. So I've got the hypotenuse. I've got this angle right here. Now this side right here, BC, is a shared side between those two triangles. Man, it would be really helpful if I could figure out what that side is. Now, based on this, this right here, this 35 degrees, this side, BC, is opposite it. So I want to find that side opposite because that's going to help me figure out something in this triangle. So I've got the hypotenuse. I want the opposite side. What trig function puts those together? And the answer is sine. So I'm going to look for the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And so that's going to be BC, don't know what that is, over 10 is going to equal the sine of 35 degrees. So again, I can go to my calculator to get the sine of 35. Okay, so this is going to be BC over 10 is equal to 0 0.5736, if I round that to the nearest fourth, uh, fourth decimal place. I'm going to cross multiply, so, and this is wonderful because it's going to be BC times 1, and then 10 times 0.5736. Now, I'm just going to do this right now because 10 times 0.5736 is just going to move the decimal over one. So this will be 5.736. Okay, or uh, 5.7, because we, we usually round those things to the nearest to the nearest uh, tenth. Now I'm still going to leave this number in here because I'm not quite done this problem. Because what I really wanted to do was figure out what that angle was right there. Well, now I know what this side is. So in this triangle here, I'm looking at this angle. I have the hypotenuse, whoops, what I'm looking for, sorry, and I also have the side adjacent to it. I don't know the side opposite the angle that I'm looking for, but I do have the side adjacent. That is that 5.7. So then I gotta ask myself, well, what trig function relates the adjacent, okay, what is now, okay, this is no longer uh, opposite, this is now the adjacent because I've switched the angle that I'm using, okay? So now, what trig function does that? Well, it's going to be the cosine. So this is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse will equal, okay, 5.7 over 12 is equal to the cosine of angle ABC. So I have the entire ratio. What I don't have is the angle. So angle ABC will equal the inverse cosine. Because remember, that's how we find the angle. So it's going to be second cosine of uh, the answer here that I just figured out divided by 12. And the answer is to the nearest degree is 61 degrees. Okay, one other thing that we want to look at before we, we uh, totally wrap this one up here is we want to take a look at what it means to solve a triangle. Solving a triangle means we're going to use the information that we're given to find everything that we don't already know. So just as an example, we're going to do this one question here. We're going to solve this triangle. Now, first of all, I'm going to label it. So I'm going to call this A. I'm going to call this B. I'm going to call that C. Which means I'm looking for little a. I have little b. And I'm looking for little c. So now I just have to do a little bit of work to figure out what's missing here. Now, one of the easiest things to do here is to figure out what angle A is going to be. Because remember, the angles in a triangle all add up to 180. So angle A is going to be 180 degrees minus the 90 minus the 39 degrees. So 100, whoops, 180 minus 90 minus 39. And I get that angle A is 51 degrees. Awesome. I've got angle A now. Now, I'm going to use the information that I was given initially to find the pieces that are missing. Okay, so which in this case are going to be little a and little c. And the reason I'm going to do that is I don't want to use the 51 degrees just in case I made a mistake with this calculation. So I'm going to stick with the information that was given to me initially. So here's the angle that's of interest to me. This side is opposite. This side is adjacent. And this is the hypotenuse. So let's, let's take a look at the hypotenuse first. 
So if I've got the side opposite and I want to find the hypotenuse, I got to think here, okay, opposite over hypotenuse, that is going to be in this case 18 over C. And then I got to think, well, what trig ratio relates the opposite and the hypotenuse? And the answer is sine. So I don't know what that ratio is, but again, I can cheat because the calculator does know what the ratio should be if this is 39 degrees. So then I go to my calculator, sine of 39, and I get 0.6293. Okay, and I treat this as if it's over 1. So I'm going to cross multiply and divide. So 18 is equal to 0 0.6293. Okay, and uh, that's going to be multiplied by C. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.6293 to get that C all by itself. So this becomes 18 divided by that answer. Okay, and remember, I leave that in the calculator so I can use the whole decimal there. And I get 28.6. And I don't know what the units are because the units weren't given in the question, but 28.6. Awesome. So I'm almost there. The only thing that I'm missing now is A. But I go back to the original information that I'm given. I'm given angle B here. I'm given the side opposite. And now I want the side adjacent. So if I, if I look at that, if I just look at that information, I know the side opposite. I know the adjacent here. Then I'm looking at the ratio that is opposite over adjacent. And that's going to be 18 over A. And that is going to be the tangent ratio. So then again, I go to my calculator and I type in the tangent of 39. And I get 0 0.8098. It's going to be 18 over A. I treat that ratio as if it's over 1, so I cross multiply. So 18 times 1 is going to be A times 0 0.8098. And then to get the A by itself, I divide and that gets me A by itself. And now I go to my calculator and it'll be 18 divided by that ratio that we just found. And to the nearest tenth, it's going to be 22.2. And so there we go. We know the hypotenuse, we know the adjacent side, and we know that missing angle. And so now we've solved the triangle. We have found everything that we didn't already know in that particular problem. So I hope that helps give you a, a sense of, of how you're going to approach these, these problems. Mm -hmm.